Welcome to Real Life with Jenny. My name's Jenny Sanapadaratna. Grab your favorite drink, get a snack, and we'll get started. Today, I've just gone with what's next to my computer. So, <laughs> I have my bottle of water, and I have a mix of M&Ms, and it's kind of sad, because all that's left are the plain M&Ms, and I really like the peanuts, so not much of a snack for me today, but that's okay. You can do better. <laughs> all right, let's get real. So we have lived in our home for 24 years. And it, you know, we've ta I've talked about how this was our temporary home. We were hoping to live here for maybe one to two years. Really not something we wanted to stay in for a very long time, but here we are. And we love our home. But when we were first here, we had this beautiful flowering tree. And it had pink blossoms. Oh my goodness, it was so gorgeous. It was right outside my kitchen window and it just brought me such joy I absolutely loved it and because we live in a community the we don't own the land and so they can chop chop down your tree anytime they like so they chopped down our tree and it was gone <laughs> and so we haven't had a tree for a lot of years and I am a big lover of trees it is something that I really I love the shade of them I love the look of them like there is not a whole lot that I don't like about them but my husband has not felt the same way so um, we have not purchased or put in another tree in the last however many years and so I actually looked into getting trees they're really expensive I've looked at Arbor Day sales and you know, looked at the prices there, got a little overwhelmed by that. I mean, it is just a very expensive thing to do. And so, you know me, I'm not going to do anything that's not, that costs a lot of money. That's just not who I am. And so I've just kind of put this on the back burner in our lives and gone, you know what? So I don't have a tree. I have no shade. It's fine. And then they started chopping down all the trees in the neighborhood <laughs> because when they find that they want to get rid of a tree they just get rid of a tree so I think last year they chopped down like 30 trees in the entire park and it's kind of sad because there's some really beautiful ones that we've lost anyway let's fast forward to me being in Sri Lanka now we're in Sri Lanka we're talking with some of Kevin's cousins and I am not someone that has a great filter I just kind of talk and then I'm like, oh, did I just say that? You know, like my husband and my daughter are super thoughtful when they speak. They just, um, they think through what they're going to say. And they're so just um, cautious. And I am every man for itself. Like, <laughs> And so for some reason, I brought up the idea that we had no tree with his cousins. And I was like, we, you know, I've been asking for a tree he doesn't want them all around it you know like just talking about this tree that is figment and it's not there and one of his cousins like turned to him and was like get the woman a tree like is it that big of a deal <laughs> and I must have made it seem like a really big deal well we came home and my husband's like so for your birthday I've decided I'm gonna get you a tree and I was like okay, thinking this is never going to happen. Now we have a very, very small yard. I mean, very, very small. <laughs> and so you have to call and find out where the wires are. And of course, everywhere that we wanted to plant a tree, there were wires because there's not a lot of land in our little area. And so finally we found a place we had to get approval of what kind of tree and where we're going to plant it, take pictures, this whole thing. And so the day came and my husband went to go to, we had gone and looked at trees and I'm like, okay, this is what I want. And he went and he picked out the tree. Now I'm going to tell you the two trees that I've always wanted <laughs> and why. So there was a willow tree at the lady that took care of me at like a daycare. So I don't, we we were there for like two to three hours every once in a while my mom sold Avon and so she'd drop us off and this lady would take care of us for a couple hours she had boys 
And so I would go outside with the willow tree and sing songs and dance with the willow tree. So I have like this really beautiful um, core memory of being with the willow tree and it just kind of hanging over me and surrounding me and making me feel like I was in a cocoon and I was safe and no one could see me even though probably everybody was like what is this weirdo doing and I just have this like very fond memory of willow trees but I also have another core memory in my life of recess. So in first grade, I was very quiet and very shy and had no friends. Um, yeah, I had no friends. I was, I just had to like think for a sec. Did I have a friend? No, I did not. I did not have a friend. And so when I went out to recess, I sat under the oak tree and played with the acorns and just kind of tried to find acorns and, you know, made them in the little families or, you know, whatever you do in first grade. I loved imagination play and um, really hope to cultivate that in my daughter. That was something that was really important to me because it really got me through a lot of things in my life. And so I remember sitting under the oak tree and that's how I spent my recess. Now, I have no idea how long I did that. It might have just been one day. I'm not sure. But I remember that one specific day, the teacher was like, okay, class, today at recess, we're all going to go to the oak tree and we're going to find the perfect acorn. And I want everybody to go over there and find the acorn. Now, as an adult, I realized what she was doing. She was bringing everyone to where I was and I had no choice but to be around people and I never actually played under the oak tree again. I actually then went to the went to the swings and I went and did the monkey bars and really became a little, okay, not super social. Let's knock it out of control. I was still very, very quiet. But I was no longer afraid of the kids because she spent that time making sure everyone came to the oak tree to get their acorns. And I was like, oh, these people aren't so scary. They like acorns too. I don't know what my little psyche was doing. But I just have a very, very fond memory of oak trees because of that. So every time I see an acorn, I think of friendship and I think of growth and potential and like it's a whole thing. I'm just kind of, I get really, I pick up acorns all the time and then I'm like, Jen, quit collecting acorns. Like, (laughs) in fact, I have planted several acorns in our yard hoping they would grow and they don't grow fast enough to not get mowed over so you know there we are (laughs) anyway so we picked an uh, acorn tree look at that an oak tree and my husband brought it home and he's done all the work he researched how to do it he dug the hole he took it out of the pot he got it all ready um, has been watering it every day. I have now named the plant. His name is Aynard. That was my grandfather's name. Um, and so I have, I found myself crying the day that the tree went in the ground. And I stood by my window and I looked out and I'm like, I have a tree. This is so amazing. Because they talk so much about when's the best time to plant a tree 20 years ago or today. And it was just one of those, like, I've been waiting for this tree for so long. And I've gone out and I talked to the tree and I found myself like the next morning I woke up and we're driving somewhere and I'm like, so when we put a swing in the tree for the grandkids, now my daughter's 17 and not dating. So like, Jenny, calm down. Um, (laughs) You know, like I have like the vision of what kind of bench I want underneath it to read my book and I can sit under the shade of this tree. And if you go to social media, you will see how big this tree is. There's no shade yet, guys. Um, (laughs) And I'll, I'll just be real with you. The best part about this tree is the tree was $20 because he was on clearance and he is now part of our family and I am hoping he makes it through the winter. But I have like these big grandiose plans. I was like, when do you think we could build a tree house inside of the tree? Like this is honestly words coming out of my mouth that I'm like, I wonder, wonder when we can build a tree house in this house, in this tree. Um, I just see such 
amazing potential in this tree. And it was very funny because I'm sitting there one day and I'm dreaming about the tree and I'm dreaming about the day that it drops a ton of acorns and Kevin's irritated because there's too many acorns in our yard and I'm out collecting them. Like, I'm just so excited. And God just was like, Jen, I see the potential in you. And I was like, what? Huh? And I am telling you that there are days, and I know you have these days too, there are days that we just do not see a future and a hope. (laughs) We just do not see that there is anything out there for us. We are like, you know what, it's too late. We didn't plant the tree 20 years ago. We didn't start the process 20 years ago. We, you know, didn't follow what the, what our hopes were then and now look where we are we've got way too many responsibilities to be able to go after that dream anymore and now I'm older and I need to make sure that a b and c get done and I just right and you can feel really discouraged <laughs> I remember for me my mom was 42 when my father left um, our home and she had been a stay-at-home mom up till then just selling Avon not just selling Avon she was amazing at it but that does not feed three children <laughs> and so she had to start over and I remember in her 40s talking about like she's never going to be able to retire because she hasn't put anything away for retirement up till then like there was no she had not worked and she had never paid into like social security, like the whole gamut. It was just kind of a, I've started too late and I'm never going to be able to retire. And now you fast forward a couple of years. It's been a couple of years since then. And now she's retired and she was able to financially retire and financially able to retire so she could take care of herself and, Um, do the things she wants to do and live life and like God really supplied she worked really hard during that time but it wasn't too late even though in the world's eyes it was right according to the spreadsheets it would never work out (laughs) and that is what I feel about my tree is yes it's 20 years to it's 20 years late like the tree came 20 years late But now it's been in the ground for a week. And it's been hard for that little tree. I know it has because the shock of like all of a sudden it needs to get a new root system and it needs to figure out this new dirt and um, it's got new elements and there's people talking to it. (laughs) All kinds of stuff going on for this little tree. And it can be shocking, but in 20 years from now, I see its potential. I see what it could be. I know what could happen if it holds on. And if we continue to water it and we continue to nurture it, I know what it can be. And I'm telling you right now, guys, that is what God is doing in your life. We may not have cheerleaders in your life right now. You may not have a spouse or children or co-workers or friends that are like, you can do it. Yeah, you may not have that. If you do count yourself blessed, because that is some of the best medicine in your life is a friend that stands behind you and cheers you on to keep going. But you may not have that right now. And I just wanted to remind you that God is the ultimate cheerleader. He is up in heaven going, yeah, you can do this. I know it's uncomfortable right now, but I have plans for you. I have goals for you. I have a bench I want to put underneath you and a tree house that I want to put up in your in your limbs. Like, I see your potential. I see what you can do. I see the gifts that I've given you. Let's go for this. Let's do this. The amount that you can do for me, if you just go after me, God will nurture you. He will take care of you. Not that it's going to be easy because there's going to be winds that come and there's going to be storms that come and There's going to be people that think they need to carve their names into the side of you, which I hope to do someday (laughs) in my tree, not in you. Um, But God sees that potential in you. 
And I just hope that you get a glimpse of that. That you don't go, I should have started 20 years ago. Because that's honestly sometimes how I feel. I feel like if I would have gone after um, speaking by now, I would be super good at it. Like I would have, I would have it under my belt. I would know how to do this. I would be someone people were looking for. I wouldn't be out there going, please, someone love me. You know, I would, that's not the plan that God had for me. I waited the 20 years. But starting today, I know I've got that cheerleader standing behind me going, Jenny, I see your potential. I know what you can do. Just keep going after it. So that's my encouragement to you today. Go after it. Plant your tree today. Go out. It may not be as expensive as you think it is. It may not be as costly as you think it is. There may be a miracle right there waiting for you. I'm telling you, when I looked at trees, they were hundreds of dollars and God gave us one for 20. And now he's little and he's small, but he will be mighty someday if we just continue to take care of it the way we know how to. And that's what God will do. You may have really little right now, but God sees your potential. And I just want you to go after it today and not wait another 20 years. Know that it's never too late to go after your dreams, your goals, even, (laughs) even I just encourage you to go and encourage someone else. Find someone that you see running after a dream that may be a little discouraged, or maybe they're not discouraged. They seem like they're doing great. Encourage them anyway, because quite often that's a fake outside. I've got this together and inside they're going, this is so bad. I am not doing well. Just go beside them and say, you've got this. I see the potential that God's put in your life. You've got this. Go encourage someone else. And I pray that someone comes along with you and encourages you. But if you're not getting that, Go to the source. Go to the ultimate person that is your biggest cheerleader. And he is. He's standing on the sidelines, screaming his head off. You've got this. Go, go, go. Even if you run the ball in the wrong direction, he will still cheer for you and love you and be your biggest support. Well, that's all I have for you this week. I just am excited about you planting that tree. Remember, the best time to do it was 20 years ago or today. So let's start planting in our lives, knowing that God sees our potential. We may not even see our potential. We may not even see what we can do, but God does. And I'm going to stand in his belief and not in my own. Because when I start standing in my own belief, we're crumbling and we're a mess. So I need to stand in his belief in me. Just like I believe in my little tree, God believes in me. You can find me on Real Life with Jenny on Instagram, Facebook, and Be Real. You can also find me at ChristConnection.cc slash Jen. I would love to come out and speak to the ladies of your church and encourage them and just love on them. Um, I'm booking in the spring and in the summer. I have a couple Christmas spots. Um but those may go fast. So if you would like to book something for Christmas, let me know so we can get that on the books. Um, Just get excited about God standing on the sidelines cheering for you. I love all those soccer moms and football moms and how excited they are about their kids as being out there. And that's what God wants for us too. He wants us to know that he's standing on the sidelines and he is our biggest cheerleader because he is the one that sees the most potential in us. So let's start looking at our lives through his eyes and not through ours and see what he can do. Have a great week.